Welcome. In this session on natural deduction, we'll explore one of the rules that we can use to eliminate universal quantifiers one at a time. To understand this, let's recall something from our work in propositional logic. So let's recall um, conjunction, conjunction elimination. And this was conjunction E, and then we had a 1 or a 2. And the idea behind this was, if an assertion about two formulas is true, then each formula is separately true. And so we had two rules. We said if we had a formula phi, a formula psi, and they were conjoined, then we could deduce phi, and we said that was conjunction elimination type 1. If we had phi conjoined with psi, we could equally well deduce the right conjunct by using conjunction elimination, and we call that type 2. Now, let's, let's consider the predicate rule. So the predicate rule is, this is universal elimination. And this rule is, you can think of this as a, a universal statement is an infinitely long conjunction. When we say that something is true of everything, that means it's true of A and B and C, and it's true of all possible things in the set. So if a statement is about everything is true, then it's true about any one of them. So here we'll have, we'll consider a universally quantified formula, just phi. And we'll have a side condition. And this side condition is that we're going to do a replacement. And that is the term T is, and let's put this in quotes so that we remember what this is from a previous session, is free for x in the formula that is quantified. That is, so when we say t is free for x in the formula, that means if we insert the term t into this formula, that t does not become a bound variable by that substitution. So our rule of universal elimination is if we have a universally quantified formula phi, we can substitute a term t for every occurrence of x in that formula. And the way this is written is we'll say we'll take that term phi, and then in our form of natural deduction, we use a square, a bracket, and we see t substitute in for x. And we'll call that the rule of universal elimination. And this is the strategy that we'll use here, is this is forward reasoning. That is, we don't normally use this backwards, we use this forwards. So let's try a simple example. Suppose that a property tr is true of some object A, and that we're saying that everything that has that property also has another property. And from that, we want to conclude that that particular object has that second property. So we could think of P, for example, being a poodle, and Q being something that is quiet. So what we're saying is all poodles are quiet. Now, that may not turn out to be true in the real world, but this is logic, right? So we'll say all poodles are quiet, that's our assertion, and Fluffy is a poodle, therefore Fluffy is quiet. So let's try to prove this. 
Well, the way that we do it is, as always, we write our premises, we write our conclusion, and then we take a look at what we've got. So here, we're going to write P of A, so that'll be a premise. And then, two, we will quantify this formula phi with a universal quantifier. And our conclusion that we can't number yet because we don't know how long it'll take is we want to assert that that object A has property Q. So we want to say fluffy, the fluffy is quiet. Well, this now, th this rule, so when we look, there's not no rule that we know. For, now, we have to include our propositional rules too, right? There's no propositional rule we can use here. There's no propositional rule we can use here. But this is universally quantified. And so I could write here, I could write P of B, P of C. I could write P of anything in the world because they're all because this statement asserts that this material implication is true of everything. Well, the one that will be convenient for me is if I assert P of A. So I'll assert that P of A material implies Q of A, and that will be the rule of universal elimination based on line 2. Let's observe that for this, I don't need to assert that I'm also using line 1. That's not part of this rule. This rule simply says if a formula is universally quantified, oh, I should have put, uh, I should have made that for all x, e, that, is, that a, um, if a formula is universally quantified, I can substitute anything that doesn't become bound by the substitution in. Here, if I substitute in A, A is not being bound by that substitution, so it's A is, so this, this formula is free for A. Okay, so, so that, that works. And now, now I have P of A, material implies Q of A, and I have P of A, which I have that as an antecedent, so now I can use a rule from propositional logic, which is I can say I can use material elimination, and our convention is that the antecedent comes first, and then the material implication comes second. And I've completed our first proof in predicate logic.